Hope everybody is having a good week. Been been a good week. Been been busy, but it's been good. So, like I always say, I'd rather be bored, uh, busy than bored, and not have anything to do. So, um, but uh, just a few things real quick before we uh, get into taking prayer requests. Just want to remind you uh, the bulletin. Uh, really, the only um, major announcement really in the bulletin right now is just the men's prayer breakfast or men's prayer meeting. Um, May the 1st, um, first Saturday of each month. So I think May the 1st um, is uh, what the first Saturday is. So just, just keep that in your mind. Um, then also I wanted to share with you uh, the Gates uh, prayer letter. Um, for uh, It's uh, actually for the month of March, but it's the latest one I, I've got. But uh, reading through it, and there's, uh, there's a lot of really neat things going on in his ministry. Um, of course, he's up there in Dearborn, uh, Michigan, uh, reaching um, Arabs. Uh, in America, and so um, just a few prayer requests that he prays for or ask, ask prayer for here. Um, he says pray for, for the teens um, in his area. Um, he was able to go and preach at a, um, I, I guess it was kind of like a youth congress, or not a youth congress, a youth conference type thing that they were having up there, and he got to go and, and um, it was, uh, go and share his, his ministry and share about missions and it was kind of geared toward missions and trying to um, encourage the, the teens of that area to, to be more mission-minded. And he said there it was actually taught at a nearby Chinese church. So I thought that was pretty neat, neat there. But um, he said he had just asked to pray for those teens that they would uh, follow Christ. And then he also mentions prayer for a guy named, um, I, I'm going to try my best to pronounce it, Mustafa, I guess is how it is. Um, he's a, a, a guy that... Um, he's been trying to witness to a few different times that he's seen him around. And he actually, in, in his letter here, says that he ran into him 45 minutes away from, um, from the learning center area there where they're, you know, using to teach people English and different things like that. Um, but uh, he's just praying that, um, that he would get saved. And then um, he also prays for uh, students at a school uh, that he was able to preach at a, a chapel service there. Livingston Christian School. Um, he's just praying that um, that uh, the, some of those students there. He said some of those students there are really interested in missions, and uh, some of them have um, have even already started learning like languages that they want to go to and be missionaries at. And they're already in, they're just in high school, and so I thought that was pretty neat. He said one of them um, has already started learning Arabic and Chinese, which you know when you really think about Arabic and Chinese are two of the biggest people groups, I guess you could say, that, that um, I guess kind of need to be reached with for Christ, but also kind of the two most people groups that are kind of hostile toward Christians. And um, to think that a teen is already trying to learn those languages so they can reach them with the gospel, that, that's pretty neat. 
and uh, kind of convicting a little bit too. So, uh, but he asked us to be praying for them, those students there. And then he, uh, he's praying for a building as well. Um, at the bottom of his prayer letter here, he mentions a independent Baptist church in their area that is actually uh, having to shut their doors. And um, he said that they have an opportunity to receive that building um, from that church. Um, he said the building holds about 100 people. And so it's a, it's a pretty good sized church, especially for one, you know, just starting out. But um, he says, according to their like constitution, different things, they have to either sell the church and give all the money toward a charity or um, give the building away to a like-minded ministry. And so he's uh, praying that, that they would, and he said they've contacted them and that that church actually contacted him about possibly doing that. And so he's just asking us to pray about uh, that situation there and, and uh, hoping that they'll be able to get that building and use it for their ministry. And, uh, and so he's just, of course, asking a prayer for his family as well. So um, a few of his uh, family members there have some health issues that they're still trying to work through. So he just says to pray for their health and for those things to get better. So just wanted to mention that. I think it's probably been a little while since we've uh, shared one of their prayer letters, but just wanted to share that. I'll, I'll try to put this up in the back after service, and I put a few other ones up uh, th today. Um, I think the Tolson's, Gates, or not, well, the Gates, uh, Coffee's, McFall. There might have been another one. I don't remember now, but um, but I'll put the, I'll try to put that up after service if you want to go back and, and read through it all. Uh, McFall. Yeah. Last I heard, last I heard, um, he had had a stem cell procedure done. Um, that's that's the last I really heard about it. Did you, did, did you, you didn't get my email mm -mm. updating it. No, is there is there more update? Well, not, not a whole lot. They're just you know they're just trying to they're praying to get back into Kurdistan and hopefully to get back very soon. Yeah, I saw. I think it was in. I think it might have been in one of those letters. I, I don't remember. He Maybe gives, it was. He sends an update. Uh, I don't know. I, I got on his list when I contacted him. Okay. And, uh, and so he sends me an update about every every two weeks or so. Okay. Yeah, I know he was originally trying to get back in like April or May or something. You on your email, but yeah, we didn't get it. I'll look again. I don't. I don't remember getting it, but I can look again. Yeah. So maybe it went to somewhere else other than my regular inbox or something. Yeah. Sometimes emails are weird. So, but uh, anyways, I'll, I'll look into that. But uh, let's just uh, you know just pray for our missionaries in general. Really, I mean, yeah. um, to it's a crazy time to be a ministry, but I think it's even more of a crazy time to be a missionary. Um, so just be praying for them and uh, certainly the Gates family is we shared their prayer letter. Brother Austin Gardner, he, he sent out another uh, post on, on email too about uh, uh, the thank, being so thank, thankful for the ones that did contribute over the Easter holidays. Have they given, given a, a total or anything? He did not have a total on there. Just kind of, I don't know when he went or if he will. Okay. I'll see if I can find that out. That'd be pretty neat to just to know. I, I'd, I'd be interested to see what what God was able to do Sunday. Was it this past Sunday? Two Sundays ago? I don't remember now. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. Everything just kind of runs together. But uh, yeah, I'll see if I can text some of them and find that out. Uh, does anybody have any prayer requests that they'd like to share, though? Yes, ma'am. I have a niece that is going to. Uh, uh, they're going to induce labor Monday at 5 p.m. Her name is Lauren. I'd like prayer for her. This is her first baby. And um, she needs prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're praying for Lauren. Anybody else? Let's be praying if Skylar gets an apartment. Mm -hmm. um, we were hoping to get a call today about one, and uh, they, they didn't call us back. She We, we spoke to her yesterday, and turn in application, all that stuff. She spoke like as long as his background check and stuff came uh -oh. back all right, that he'd, he'd probably get it. But <laughs> there's maybe something he's not telling me. I don't know. Maybe I need to do one to see, see what comes back. <laughs> but we just want to be praying. I'm sure that um, 
but she's probably just busy or who knows. Um, maybe she's sick or something. I don't know. But we just uh, we want to be praying about that. Any other prayer requests? Yeah, Brother Gary, it's a, it's, has anybody heard from Rodney at all? I spoke to him, I think it was two weeks ago, I spoke to him and wasn't able to speak to him very long. He was doing something for Alex, he said, but um, said he'd call me back and I hadn't heard, so. But you know, other than that, I hadn't heard from him in, in two weeks or so. I think it, I think it was call. two weeks ago on Wednesday I, I talked to him. Have you heard anything from Ronnie? No. No, I've thought about him a few times. I've yeah. been, but he's, he's not. No, he's, no, bro. Well, part I, of it, I, just, I tried to encourage him, but I, part of it is just like, might be the wife's health. I can't do it with wife's health. Usually surfaces after a while. They've just yeah. been praying for our members. They'll mm -hmm. get back in church here. I mean, you know, I feel like it's safe enough that people start coming back in the house of God. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, they, they can use that excuse so long, which I don't say it's an excuse, but but uh, still, I mean, at what point do you come back? Yeah. Yeah, we need to be praying for. Be them. praying for that. I mean, Absolutely. I've been praying that God would just put it on the heart to be back here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm taking uh, Buddy's ex-wife. When I visit him, she goes over every day and stays with him while his daughter works. And so I've been able to take her through the for the horses discipleship started her with and uh this I just pray that she will stay encouraged to do that. I mean she was on she was home as far as now it's just, you know, like pulling teeth to get her to involved in mm -hmm. it. And, and I know it's not me that's gonna make the difference, but you know, I just I'd like to see her she she told me that she got saved. Uh, so I, I don't know that. I'm just going by her word. Yeah, what's her name? Her name is Pam. Pam. Okay, I'm praying for her. And if you will, pray for Buddy's daughter. She's she's divorced, but she's also she's having a child out of wedlock. I just uh, I, it bothers me some, but. Anyone else? Any other prayer requests? What do you think about some of us taking turns and praying during prayer? I, 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 I'd, I'd be more than happy to. There's a lot of burden, I think, you know. Um, maybe they want to pray. Yeah. I didn't know. It wouldn't, wouldn't bother me at all. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> my sister. I, I, yeah. My sister Kathy needs uh, a power broker for her, but I just don't know where yeah. she's at. Pray for her. I promised my mom that I'd try to stay in touch with my family and keep them close. And, yeah. and I called her, and she's always in the bed or not able to come home. I, just, I don't know. I, I, just, I know she deals with a lot of things, a lot of depression, but mm -hmm. it just it concerns me. It concerns me. Mm -hmm. Pray for her. Anybody else? Any other prayer requests? If there's no other prayer requests, uh, Pastor Horace, you want to pray first, and Brother Jerry, you can close us in prayer? That's fine. 
Our God and Heavenly Father, Lord, would thank you to come together to pray together as a church. Father, you said we're there two or three together in, in thy name. You're there in our midst, Father. Amen. We thank you for that. And and dear Lord, we, we pray for the power of God, uh, Lord, to, to move upon our hearts and people. And uh, Lord, there's a great cultural shift. There's, there's a great uh, uh, change in a secular uh, society. And uh, Lord, uh, uh, there's many challenges that's facing many of ministries. Lord, at Dearborn, Michigan, I mean, Lord, all the Muslims up there, yeah. that they're trying to reach and we'll pray for, uh, pray for them, pray for them to get that church, Lord. And thank you for it. It's, it's a yes. great move of ministry. I think everybody that's that's serving somewhere in some place, Lord, is uh, would love to see uh, people saved and lives changed. And there, and uh, Lord, Christians want to be fruitful in in all that we do. Help us to be fruitful in our labors, Lord. And pray for Skyler. Thank you, Lord, that uh, it's a big move coming down here, Lord. They're not having an apartment or having a place right now. A lot of uncertainties and Lord um, job and uh, getting settled and uh, Lord um, uh, his life uh, uh, that he wants to count for you Lord and I yeah, yeah. just pray you bless him give him much fruit for his labor and uh, Lord uh, pray for our pastor here Lord just thank you for him pray uh, Lord you continue to encourage him and work toward getting that house that they're trying to get Lord it's been a, yeah. quite a journey and the Lord is part of the whole thing, and, and uh, we we just uh, thank you. And Father, pray for our members here. Lord, there's uh, some of them have just been sickly, and Lord, it, it, and and others have, have just uh, uh, I don't understand. Lord, some of them just uh, pray for their encouragement spiritually. Lord, and uh, that they come to hear the word of God and be encouraged and strengthened in the faith. Father. Mm -hmm. Pray for Jerry's sister, Lord. Hard yeah. to pray for our family members. Sometimes a prophet's without honor in his own home. Yeah. And uh, Lord, that can be very true. Oh, that's just uh, they just shrug it off. And uh, mm -hmm. well, he's just from Nazareth, Lord. I mean, they're just oh. uh, the comments that's always made, Lord, mm -hmm. and, and the thoughts, and as though we, it would take an angel from heaven to come down and oh. convince some that they're not going to come down. They're going to use us. Mm -hmm. Lord, pray to give us the words to say and the things that we might do. Uh, to make the difference, Lord, in this, and uh, we do pray for uh, uh, Lord our church and uh, and and our missions, and we thank you for the uh, ministry that's given to uh, Brother Gardner. Pray yeah. you bless him and his ministry and other ministries. I'm hearing a church closing down mm. in Dearborn. I mean, Lord, churches are closing down. They're good churches, and uh, Lord, there's a real challenge here culturally and otherwise, and. We pray that we, we might see this church grow and Lord you we, we'd be able to reach these people with the gospel. Yes. And uh, Lord COVID's got a big part in that and and uh, help us to come back from that. Just those few things, just other things the Pastor mentioned with prayer and and as a missionary for the the falls the heart goes out to them, Lord, I just thank you for them and pray you continue to use them and do much fruit for their labor. And we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for, for this day. Thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us to come together once again. Lord, we thank you that, uh, Lord, we can still come together, Lord, freely and, uh, Lord, certainly without persecution. It's, Lord, some people aren't allowed to. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I pray that, uh, Lord, you would just help us to be so thankful for that. Yes. And I pray that you'd be with these prayer requests mentioned tonight, Lord. I pray that your hand would be over them and that your will would be done in every situation. God, we certainly want to pray for the Gates family and, and just thank you for the ministry that they have there, Lord, as they reach a, a people group, Lord, that um, isn't all that easy to reach, but um, Lord, they have a burden for it and a heart for it. And I pray that you bless them in their ministry. And that you would be with these things that they've mentioned, Lord, yeah. especially this building, that uh, you would allow them to get that to use for their ministry. And, and uh, Lord, I know that they would make good use of it. Lord, we want to pray for all missionaries, certainly, Lord, those that, uh, Lord, those, those that are still around here that are trying to raise support and, uh, Lord, trying to get to where you've called them to go. I pray that you would help them and bless them, Lord, give them the support they need. 
God, we also pray for those that um, are in the place that you've called them, Lord, and pray that you would bless their ministries there, protect them and their families, and just use them in a mighty way, Lord, and just, uh, Lord, meet the needs that they have even. God, we pray for uh, Vision Baptist, Lord, as they seek to, to build this training center, Lord. Pray that you would give them, Lord, the things that they need to do that, and that you would, uh, Lord, just bless those that were able to give to the offering. Uh, Lord, all, all around the world, Lord, I know that there are people who gave, and I just pray that you'd bless them for that. Lord, pray that you'd take that money and, and use it, Lord, and multiply it and, and just bless them with it, Lord. God, we want to pray for Susan's niece, Lauren, Lord, who's having a baby soon. Just pray that you would be with her, that you would be with her doctors, Lord, give them the wisdom they need, and just pray that you would allow everything to go um, as good as it possibly could, that uh, Lord, Lauren and the baby both would come out healthy and, and well, and and you would just uh, bless their family. We also pray, Lord, that you would bless Skylar, give him, Lord, the apartment to live in. And, Lord, if the, the one that we've been trying to get isn't your will, Lord, we just pray that you would, uh, Lord, show us what to do, where to go, and that you would just open the right doors and, and close the wrong ones, Lord. But if it be your will, we pray, Lord, that we would find that soon and, and be able to take care of that. God, we pray for him as he starts a new job, and, and Lord, uh, uh, just everything's new for him, and, and Lord, it can be a, a hard time and a hard time to adjust to, but I pray, Lord, that you would give him comfort, peace, and strength, and wisdom, Lord, that he needs, and allow him to adjust to his new job and, and just to do well there, Lord. God, we pray that you would be with Brother Gary and continue to comfort him, give him the strength he needs, and we pray for Matt and, and Victoria as well, Lord, that you would be with them, and uh, Lord, I pray that you'd work in their lives. God, we also pray for our church members here, Lord, who haven't been in a little while, but whether it's due to COVID or, or whatever it may be, Lord, just pray that you would uh, allow them, Lord, to, to get to the place, Lord, to where they would want to come back and uh, just lay that on their hearts, give them the burden and desire to be back in your house with the believers. And uh, God, just pray that you would uh, allow them to do that. Lord, we also want to pray for Pam as she's been doing discipleship with Jerry. God, I pray that you would use her and uh, just give her the desire, Lord, that she needs the, and that she needs to have to, to be discipled and to grow closer to you, Lord. God, we also want to pray for Buddy's daughter, Lauren, who is expecting, Lord. And, and Lord, it's a tough situation to be in, I'm sure. And we just pray, Lord, that you would help her and, and guide her to you, Lord, and, and uh, allow her, Lord, to, to look to you for the strength that she needs. Lord, we also want to pray for Jerry's sister, Lord. I pray that you'd help her and, and, Lord, that you would encourage her and lift her up. And, Lord, I don't know if she's saved or not, but, God, if she's not, I pray, Lord, that you would show her, Lord, how much she needs you. And if she is, God, I pray you would help her to rely on you for strength and, and for comfort and for her needs. And, Lord, I certainly thank you for Jerry having a, a heart for his family and that he would just, uh, Lord, continue to have that burden and be there for him to pray for him. And, God, I pray for our church today, Lord that you would help us, Lord, to be a praying church. And I know we are, God, but, uh, Lord, we need to be more of a praying church. And, and Lord, our, our whole church needs to be a praying church, not just those that gather here on Wednesday, but, Lord, our whole church needs to come together in prayer and, and Lord, bring our requests to you, Lord. God, so many times I think that we have things in our lives, Lord, that we want and we desire, but, Lord, we don't, we don't ask for them the way we should. Uh, Lord, if you only answered our prayers according to our uh, our efforts and our the way we ask, Lord, we wouldn't have much because, Lord, we don't we don't pray like we should, Lord. We don't we don't come to you in Thanksgiving and and make our our requests, Lord. We we do it some, but Lord, we don't do it like we should. Uh, Lord, your word certainly tells us to pray without ceasing, Lord. And uh, Lord, we need to be in constant communication with you. We need to be in your word, and uh, Lord, we just need to be in constant fellowship with you. So, Lord, I pray that you would help us to be a church who is, who is like that, Lord, who is constantly in fellowship and in prayer, Lord. And God, I pray that you would help us tonight as we continue going through Romans, Lord. So much, Lord, there that you have to show us. And, uh, Lord, it can be hard to understand sometimes. But, God, I'm praying, Lord, that you, through your Holy Spirit, would help us to understand your word. And, uh, Lord, that you would help us to apply it to our lives. And, and, Lord, that we wouldn't just keep it to ourselves, but we would take it and share it with others, Lord, that need to hear it. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'd help me tonight as, as I try to do the best I can. But, Lord, help me not to do, uh, Lord, the best that I can because it's not much. Lord, help me to do the best that I can through you. And, uh, Lord, just, that you would just use me and speak through me. And, and just, uh, Lord, just uh, use your Holy Spirit tonight, Lord, to, to teach us your word. And, uh, Lord, uh, I know that 
Uh, Lord, if we will have our hearts open and our, and our ears open to hear, Lord, we will hear from you because your word doesn't return void, and we thank you for that. So, Lord, we pray that you'd meet with us here tonight, be with those that can't be with us, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Is anybody else wanting to pray tonight? Anybody else? You want to you want to close us in prayer? Uh, if any, some, does anybody else want to pray? All right, brother Jerry, you can go ahead and close us. Laborers are few that want to come in and serve in the local church. I just pray for their hearts to be burdened, Lord God. You know, I, I just remember, Lord Jesus, when you you spoke so many times, those that have an ear, let them hear. And yet, Lord God, uh, we see the deafness of the world today. They don't want to hear the word of God. They don't want to know. It just seems like they don't want to know the things of God. Uh, it just reminds me of, of the laying to see in church, Lord, have a need for nothing. They think they're rich. They think they have everything they need. And we can, as Brother Chris said there, we can, we can get like that. And we just pray when we have a great need, Lord, not when we uh, want a fellowship or be in communion with the God of heaven. But I pray tonight, Lord God, for these prayer requests that have been lifted up. Uh, they have been mentioned, or used to be mentioned them again, but I, my heart's burdened for some of these ones, Lord. It, uh, I see there, sometimes there's hunger, but so often as Jesus, Lord Jesus, you spoke of, of, the, of the sower going out to sow. Uh, and where these seeds are falling, Lord God, they're, uh, they're in so many ways, they're being, they're being cast to the hard, stony ground or the thorns or whatever, Lord, but there seems very little uh, fertile soil out there to sow, Lord. But thank you, Lord God, that uh, that doesn't hinder your word, as Brother Chris said. Your word does not return void, Lord. We know that your word goes where it will, where you want it to, and it, it, it does the things that you want it to do. But we must be faithful, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, that we'll help. Have a, if we stay close as a family of God and in the house of God, we'll, we'll learn to be faithful. We'll learn to be faithful because you said that the much that is given, much is required, Lord. And, and how, can we, how can we serve God if we not be faithful? Mm -hmm. And I just thank you, Lord God, that for these brothers here, sisters tonight, that they're faithful to, to have, when the doors are open to be in the house of God with the heart's burden for, for the lost. And that's what it's all about, Lord, the lost. You, you said you came to seek and to save the lost. And that's what you've sent us to do, to seek the lost. And when, will we, when will we do that, Lord? Will we give, have an excuse? When we come before you, will we have it? What excuse shall we, shall we use then? Burden our hearts, Lord. Because you said the fields are white unto harvest, but the laborers are few. But what great things Jesus did with few, with two fishes and and and, and five loaves, Lord. What, what, how can we judge uh, that we are few? We thank you, Lord, tonight. Again, we thank you for the word of God being taught tonight. May it encourage us, may it instruct us. Even as the scripture says that all, all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable, that it be profitable unto us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's take our Bibles. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans, and uh, we're in chapter 6 tonight. We're starting chapter number 6. Just moving right along. But uh, Romans chapter 6 is probably going to take us a little bit to get through. There's, there's a lot to it and a um, lot to go through. So Romans chapter 6. Uh, tonight I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get through five verses tonight. 
Um, there, there's a lot packed in um, into these five verses. And, and the way Paul kind of lays out, he kind of, uh, when you really look at it, Romans 5, 6, and 7 are kind of all tied together. And, um, but he kind of structures out things a little bit. And in, in, in chapter 6, verses 1 through 11, it's kind of his bir- first big emphasis and, um, and if I'm being honest with you, the first 11 verses of Romans 6 are, are probably um, one of my most favorite passages of Scripture in the Bible, just because it's done a lot for me personally um, over the years, just helped me. I can remember uh, when I first really kind of, I mean, started getting real serious about serving the Lord, I was about 20, 21 years old, and of course started preaching at 21, and I can remember Romans 6 being, excuse me, being uh, one of those areas that that really helped me to understand that, you know, I'm, I'm called to live a different life. I'm called to be set apart, and because of my faith in Christ, uh, just like it talks about in Romans four, and then Romans five talks about us being alive and having life because of His resurrection. Um, you know, Romans six just accompanies accompanies it perfectly with telling us that you know we we're planted in His death, but we're also raised in His resurrection as well. So uh, let's just read the first five verses tonight, and uh, we'll we'll just try our best to get through there and see what the Lord does. So Romans chapter number 6, verse number 1 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. I think verse number five is probably uh, in my opinion, at least, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly no Bible scholar or you know, theologian or anything, but in my opinion, I think verse number five is probably the key verse for chapter number six, because I, I think it really summarizes what Paul is trying to teach through Romans chapter six, especially in those first 11 verses, because he tells us, you know, we're planted together in his death, but we're, if we're planted in his death, we're also planted in his resurrection, and, and, you know, we can certainly uh, take a lot of joy and comfort in that because we know that, you know, him talking about being dead to sin, but we're also alive forevermore because of his resurrection. And, and um, so we'll, we'll get to that. But let's let, let me give you just a little bit of, um, I guess, an introduction. Um, liter, liter, literarily, I don't know how, what the right phrasing would be, but uh, there is no break between Romans 5 and Romans 6 when it comes to uh, the actual writing of the book of Romans. There's no break there. Of course, you know, chapters are often just kind of uh, put in there uh, for different reasons, but there's really no break between Romans 5 and 6. Uh, Romans 5 continues right in uh, alongside Romans chapter 6. It continues the argument that was begun by chapter number 5. And so Paul in chapter 6 is still dealing with the the subject of sin as a whole. Uh, But now he is going to show that Christ's victory at Calvary liberates us not only from sin's penalty, but also from its power. And of course, we, we talked a lot about that in Romans chapter 5, talking about how uh, by one man sin entered and by one man death. And then it also talks about by one man uh, we're alive, uh, brings life. And that was in, I think that was in uh, verse number 12 there, by, uh, wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men for all have sinned. But it goes on to talk about uh, by one man, Jesus Christ, of course, the, the second Adam, like we talked about in 1 Corinthians. Uh, we talked about that on Easter, Easter morning. Uh, but by that one man, we also have life. And so, um, so it kind of continues into that thought, talking about how Christ's victory gives us, not only delivers us from sin's penalty, but also from sin's power of death. Um, Romans chapter 5, the beginning part of Romans chapter 5, talks a lot about our eternal security. 
And that kind of goes along, uh, along with Romans chapter 6, but in kind of in a different way. Because in Romans 5, Paul is talking about how we have eternal security through our faith in Christ. But at the beginning of Romans chapter 6, Paul is saying you do have that eternal security, but that does not give you the right to go and live however you want. Just because you have eternal security and you can't lose your salvation, that does not mean you just go out and live in sin just because you're still going to be saved anyway. And Paul actually makes the argument that it should actually be the other way around. Uh, we who were once dead in, to, uh, dead in our sins, and we go back to Romans 3 and Romans 2 and talk about that again, how we were dead in our sins, we were dead because of our sin, like it talks about in Romans 5, 12, because of Adam, we were dead in our sins, but now, through our faith in Christ, we are dead to our sin. We are dead to sin. And so, Paul, in chapter 5, like I said, he talks about that eternal security, and uh, through Christ's resurrection, many took the doctrine of eternal security of the believer and thought they had freedom to sin, uh, but Paul, as I said, he'll actually teach how we are free from sin. We're not free to sin, we're free from our sin. And that's kind of the, the, kind of the main thought here in the first five verses or so. Uh, but the expression, free from sin, uh, it, it occurs three times in Romans chapter 6. In verse 7, 18, and 22, um, he talks about being free from sin. So we'll We'll see that several times. And there's a few, a few little phrases like that in Romans 6 and um, even a few times in Romans 7 that you'll see that Paul kind of uses to kind of outline his teaching a little bit. And we'll, we'll get a little bit more into that. But um, there's, there, he, like I said, he kind of lumps together chapter 6 and 7. And so what we'll be doing as we go through chapter 6 and chapter 7 we're going to kind of do the same thing as he did, and he kind of outlined them, outlined them in different ways. And as I said, his first big point was in chapter, or verse 1 through 11. And so we'll, we'll try to do that first um, in Romans uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. But uh, sub point, I guess you would say, would be verse 1 through 5, which I, I hope to get through tonight. So uh, let's just go there to Romans chapter 6 and uh, look through. Uh, kind of look through the verses there in, in verses 1 through 5. Um, the first point there in, in verses 1 through 11 is uh, Paul talks about deliverance from the domain of death. He talks about the deliverance from the domain of death. And so uh, according to Paul, ignorance was really a uh, key factor hindering the life of victory. And when you really think about that, um, he, he talks about in verse number one, you know, what shall we say then? You know, he's kind of asking them the question, don't you know better? Um, they were ignorant to that fact. They were ignorant. They just didn't know better. And, you know, when you really think about it, there's a lot of truth to that. Ignorance is a key factor in hindering our life of victory. And, and so many Christians struggle because they don't know the Bible as well as they should. They don't know their Savior as well as they should. And so the reason that you see people struggle so often is just because they, they, they're ignorant. And I'm not, that's not at all calling somebody dumb or anything. It's just to call somebody ignorant is just mean they, they don't know, right? I'm ignorant at a lot of things. Um, you could ask Brother Jerry, I'm ignorant when it comes to, to building things. Uh, he, he knows that. He, he helped me build that maze. He knows I'm ignorant with that. I'm ignorant in a lot of things. I'm ignorant in, in a lot of things of the Bible because I don't know everything about it. But the reason a lot of Christians struggle, the reason I struggle sometimes, is because I don't know the Bible the way I should, because people don't know the Bible the way they should. They don't give the attention to it they should. They don't, give, they don't have the desire for it, the passion, the devotion, the discipline that they need to know it. And so it causes them not to know doctrine, the it causes them not to know the commands and the principles of the Bible that it teaches us, to, that, that guide us in how we should live. And, and so often Christians struggle because they're ignorant about what the Bible teaches. And Paul certainly was dealing with that uh, several times through Scripture. But if we're ignorant to God's Word, we'll struggle in finding victory over sin in our life. The expression there, know ye not, 
uh, occurs three times in this section of, uh, of Romans chapter 6. It occurs in verse 3, verse 16, and verse number 1. But there in verse 3, he says, Know ye not. Again, so he's like, hey, are you, why are you ignorant to this? Like, I've, I've just spent all this time teaching and, and everything else. And of course, I'm sure they probably heard other apostles teaching and different things. And he said, Know ye not. Uh, so it helps us to, to divide that kind of into sections like I talked about. And he uses it to kind of outline these next two chapters. Um, the exp- there's also another expression which he uses a few times in, in these next two chapters, and that's through Jesus Christ our Lord, which we know we have victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not because we can defeat sin. It's not because we can live a good life, right? It's through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so once again, he uses that to help outline his teaching as well. And so the first area of ignorance that Paul deals with has to do with the domain of death that he talks about in these first few verses here. Uh, Death, which was once our enemy, like he talked about in Romans 5, because of Adam, you know, we all must die. We all must experience death. Sin brings forth death, right? Sin or death was once our, once our enemy, but now it is actually made to tell the believer the benefits of Christ's victory over the tomb. Death was once our enemy, but now death is just kind of the, the door that we use to get to God, right? It's, it's not, we're not afraid of death now because we have faith in Christ. Because of His resurrection, we have a resurrection. Because He lives forever, we live forever. And so we don't, death is not our enemy anymore. And so in verses 1 through 5, he talks about how the reality of our death is with Christ. The reality of our death with Christ. Notice with Christ being the kind of the important part there. And so when Paul was teaching, uh, he was teaching that the believer has already died. And it was such a revolutionary idea for that time Uh, that Paul began teaching with the truth of it. He began teaching the truth of that reality that the believer has already died because Christ has already died. So in verse 1 and 2, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And And I think it's interesting to note that the phrase God forbid is actually said to be one of the strongest rebukes in the Greek language. And so Paul was just absolutely putting his foot down with with great authority and saying, God forbid you think that way. God forbid you are not free to sin, you are free from sin. You are not free to live however you want, you are free to live your life through Christ. And that's that's what he was trying to get this, this revolutionary, revolutionary idea that he was trying to teach, it was, it was new to them. And so he had to start with the truth of it. You know, when you get to thinking about, you know, the reality of our death with Christ, you kind of, you kind of got to think about uh, death in the most literal sense of it. And, uh, you know, more unresponsive than a person who is dead, right? Um, you know, I can remember being a youth pastor, maybe Skylar remembers some of this, but, um, there was a game we used to play in youth group called, called Mafia. And d- during the game, you know, certain people would die. And the rule was, if you died during the game, you were not allowed to talk anymore. And so many times people would try to talk and him like, hey, dead people can't talk, you know. And, uh, but the truth is, you know, a, a dead person is completely unresponsive to anything, right? And Paul uses this illustration to say, that's the way we are to be to, to sin, we are dead with Christ. We are to be completely unresponsive to the desire of sin, to its temptation, to, to any of it. And so imagine someone trying to provoke a reaction from, from a dead corpse. Uh, think, think about it like this. I don't know if this is um, morbid or not, but I, I'm, I'm not certainly not trying to be. Uh, but if you tell a joke to a dead person, they don't laugh, right? Uh, hopefully, yeah. But you, you can't get a response out of them, right? If you say something mean to a dead person, they don't get up and try to fight you, right? Uh, you, you can kick them. You can, you can command it to move. You can, you know, you can pick it up and, and throw it around. But a response will not come. 
due to the simple fact that a dead person cannot be provoked or made to respond. And Paul, Paul is just teaching us here that you're dead to sin. Sin should not move you. Sin should not provoke you. But, of course, we know, and Paul also teaches that we fight our flesh so much. But God reckons the believer to be dead to the promptings of sin. There's a neat little story here that I found that I wanted to read that gives a little bit of insight of how somebody discovered this truth. But um, this was actually set in, in Scotland a long time ago. Um, so it's, it's an actual true story. But um, in a certain church long ago was a narrow, bigoted, old church member who was stuck in the old paths and suspicious of anything new. A dried up old diehard he was sitting in judgment of all who refused to see things the way he did and his views of Scripture. He had a horrible temperament. His name was McAdam, which I guess was a Scottish name. Uh, to this church came a young man with fresh dew of God's anointing upon him, a young man with a vision, a gift, charm, and possessed an unusual grasp of Scripture and a distinct measure of wisdom. This young man's ministry was singularly blessed of God to the salvation of souls and the quickening of many of God's people. But inevitably, perhaps, some of his views did not coincide with those of the sour old man who thought he ruled the church. For years, the man did all in his power to discourage, oppose, and criticize the young preacher. One day, another member of the church asked the younger man how he managed to put up with this old man. The young preacher said, I died to McAdam five years ago. This, this young man had grasped the secret of the believer's death with Christ. We must also grasp the truth of how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. And, you know, I read that and I, and I got to thinking, you know, so many times the devil tries everything in his power not to just tempt us with sin or provoke us to sin, but he also provokes us to discouragement, to defeat. And so many times we go into battles already defeated because he's already got in our heads. And uh, this young man here learned that we're already dead to that. We, can't, we shouldn't be provoked to wrath. We shouldn't be provoked to, to response of sin or to the devil because we're dead with Christ, but we're also alive with him. And so he, he understood that. Uh, there should be in our lives such an experience to the reality of our death with Christ that sin can provoke no response from us at all. But we, of course, know that so often that's not the case. We are provoked sometimes because sometimes we are weak in our flesh. But we also see next that Paul asserts the triumph of it. And to drive home this point, he gives us two really interesting illustrations in verse 3, he says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. In verse 3, he uses the word baptized, and the word baptized in this passage has the definition from the word Baptizo, which in Greek means the introduction or placing of a person or thing into a new environment or into a union with someone else so as to alter its condition or its relationship to its previous environment or condition. Now, I know that's, that's a mouthful, right, of, of a definition. But, but really, it's, this is the usage for Romans chapter 6. Uh, the word baptize, this is its usage, the baptizo. It refers, now let, me, let me break it down a little bit, a few different ways, I guess. Um, but this word, it refused to the act of God introducing a believer, a believing sinner, into a vital union with Jesus Christ in order that the believer might have the power of his sinful nature broken and the divine nature implanted through his identification with Christ in his death, his burial, and his resurrection altering the condition and the relationship of that sinner with regard to his previous state of, uh, in his previous state and his previous environment, which, of course, we know what our previous state, our previous environment was. Our previous state was lost and, and 
going to experience hell for all of eternity. And our, that, that was the environment we lived in. And so through our union with Christ, we, we now have a new nature. We have a new environment, a new standing. And so, and of course, we know that our, our new environment one day will be the kingdom of God, right? So, uh, in other words, we, we are baptized with Christ, but we're also baptized into His death and into His resurrection, like it tells us in verse number 5. Um, this means that uh, it, it divinely changes our current state and our, our current nature, and so it changes our world, it changes our desires, it changes our heart, it, it changes everything about us. Uh, Paul first refers to our uh, baptism in Christ there. And, and really that's, that's kind of a big thought here in these first five verses is our baptism into Christ. Uh, and this is something that happens at the moment of conversion. Uh, some, say, some say this refers to a water baptism. Some says, say it refers to a spiritual baptism. But either way you want to go with that, the fact remains that Paul is driving home the reality that our death with Christ by pointing, uh, is, points to a real and actual personal experience that takes place when we put our faith in Him. And so we are, we are uh, baptized into His death and baptized into His resurrection. And because of that, we're, everything has changed. We're, everything used to be dead, but now everything has life. And so we are living in that life through Jesus Christ. The second illustration that Paul uses is in verse number 5. In verse number 5, we'll read that once again. It says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall also be in the likeness of His resurrection. And so the illustration he uses here is that word planted there. That word planted, it's actually, it literally means united together. United together. And so th this word could even... Uh, Excuse me. This word could even be used to, de to describe Siamese twins. Uh, a lot of commentators say that, that this is the same word that they would use to, to describe Siamese twins because they're, 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 they're linked together. They're, they're, they're right there united together. And um, it can also be translated united by growth. And uh, it's really interesting. Uh, a lot of um, commentators say that uh, the word it exactly expresses the process by which a graft becomes united with the life of a tree. Now, I didn't know I, I didn't know what they were talking about when when it talked about the graft with the you know the tree and maybe you guys know what that's talking about. I didn't, so I had to look it up and see what it's talking about. And sometimes you'll see a tree with a big knot in the middle of it. That's because a from what I can understand, maybe you guys could point out if I'm wrong on this, but They'll basically take an, a, a part of another tree and paste, put it together there, and it'll grow together and become one tree, right? And that's, ex that's what it's representing there in verse number 5 is we are taken, attached to Christ, and becoming one with Him through our baptize, uh, baptism with Him, and we are united with Him and given life through Him. And so it's a really neat illustration, and, and I never ever would have thought of that, but um, it's really interesting the, word, the way that it describes that. Uh, and so being planted with Him. Uh, and so the Christian becomes grafted into Christ, and we become vitally united with Him, and we share His life. We, we share, he shares His life with us. And so in these two illustrations... Um, Paul is seeking to convey the remarkable truth that Christ's death was our death. His burial was our burial. His resurrection was our resurrection. And he, he, died, he not only died for me, but this is, this is really interesting. He died, he died as me. He, he took our place, right? That's what we always teach. He took our place. So he not only died for me, but he died as me in, in a sense. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and so, far, so as far as God is concerned, we are already on the resurrection side of the grave because we have life in Christ. We have eternal life right now. Eternal life is a present possession and it can never be taken. And so we're already on the resurrection side of the grave and all that remains is for us to realize this truth and apply this truth 
to have victory in our life. You know, as I said so many times, Christians live in defeat. It's because they don't apply the truth of God's Word to their life. And, and it all comes down to what we talked about at the very beginning. So many times we're ignorant to the truth of God's Word. We're ignorant to its, to its principles, to its commands, to its leading in our lives. And, you know, if we would truly be in fellowship with the Lord, not just through His Word, but in prayer as well, we wouldn't be as ignorant about those things, would we? We would be in tune with His Holy Spirit, and we could have the victory that so often we need in our lives. So I thought that was pretty interesting, the first five verses there. A lot to them, a lot that, I've, that I never really even thought much about. So, um, so let's just go ahead and we'll end in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for this day. Thank you, Lord, so much for the truth of your word, Lord. And God, so many times you have so much more for us than, than what we understand or what we think. And uh, Lord, we just scratch the surface sometimes of your word. And Lord, if we'd really give ourselves to it and, and search it and study it and Lord, not be ignorant of it, Lord, you would have just so much for us to learn. And uh, Lord, we could experience this victory in our life so many times. But God, I just pray that you would help us to, to, to not be ignorant, Lord. Help us to learn as much as we can. And uh, Lord, just to, to know all we can about your word and about you and to be in constant fellowship with you, Lord. Lord, help us to, to understand these things, to apply them. And Lord, as I said, to, to share them with others, Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would help us and give us a good rest of the week. And pray this in your name. Amen.